language. Every word is perfect. Is that what you believe? Because the devil stops at nothing to try to take you and try to show you or reveal this, this new secret now that the Bible really isn't all the Word of God. And he started that out with, Yea, hath God said. His goal, his job, is to try to get you to destroy your own foundation. You do it. Because some preacher, maybe Mike Hoggard, maybe somebody else, some preacher preached to you that the authorized Bible was it. And it was, it was unmistakable. No mistakes in it. It was inerrant. It was incorruptible. And you decided to rest on that. And you saw it plainly in the scripture that it was. And then the devil comes along and he tries to shake your foundation. I, I have a little theory. And that theory kind of goes like this. The theory says that I think that there's going to be a paradigm shift. And I think the devil is going to, I think something is going to be uncovered, revealed, whatever, a new secret that's been hid a thousand years, the lost symbol, um, that is going to absolutely shake every man's foundation of what they believe. Only those who have the solid foundation of every word of God, their foundation will not be shaken. It will remain firm. And so if your foundation is destroyed, what can the righteous do? Nothing. And that's what the devil's trying to do. It's what he tries to do with me. He tries to do it with you. He tries to destroy your foundation, the foundation of your life, which is the inerrant word of God. People like, um, people like Michael Rood, Jim Staley, people like the Seventh-day Adventists, people like all the, the Mormons and all these cults, and then, and then all these super highly educated scholars and preachers that stand behind the big pulpits in America and all over the world are trying to convince you that the old King James Bible really isn't a Bible. It's something else. Conspiracy websites will try to, will try to prove, prove to you with no evidence whatsoever that the authorized Bible was translated by Francis Bacon and that it's an Illuminati code book and it's really the, the, the real, the, and, and the real uh, word of God is in your heart. You just get it from the spirit or something like that. But they're trying to destroy the foundation of the inerrant, incorruptible word of God in your heart. Think of why. Because you will not be able to stand if your foundation is destroyed. Did you, have you seen the sinkholes in California? They think that it's caused by uh, a very, very deep underground volcano. And these houses, these hundreds and hundreds of thousands of dollars of houses in California, because everything out there is like triple expensive, sitting on this land that the bottom literally falls out from underneath it. And their house is just, their house doesn't just float above that and say, we, we, we not worried about it. They're being destroyed. There was a car, I, I can't remember where it was, they showed it on the news this morning. It literally was on the street and then it went plunk. An underground water main had destroyed the, gr the ground underneath the pavement. And when that car got on that pavement, it was hollow underneath that and his car just sank. This is what we're referring to. The foundation is being, the Bible is being, listen to this, this is a good word, undermined. It's being undermined by the scholars and by the experts and by the big, uh, big dog preachers out there with, who are making tons and tons and tons of money. It's being undermined by the Hebrew roots and the cultists and everybody else so that you listen to, you listen to some of these guys like, like Staley and others who will sit there as you're reading Galatians for just what it says. You go, you know what? We're saved by grace through faith and not of works. That's what it says. And then Staley takes you and he undermines the foundation of the authorized Bible by telling you that's not really what it says. If it, if it was originally written in Hebrew like I wanted it to be, it would have said what I wanted it to say. And that's what he does. And people fall for it. Your house won't stand. 
Uh, Psalm 137.7, Remember, O Lord, the children of Edom in the day of Jerusalem, who said, Raise it, raise it. That is R-A-S-E, not R-A-I-S-E. See, one letter makes a difference, doesn't it? Raise it means to absolutely tear it down, even to the foundation thereof. Destroy even the foundation. Now think about what happened, what Jesus prophesied in Matthew 24. He said, I tell you, there should not be one stone left upon another. And so A.D. 70, they come in, they destroyed the temple, but they left one wall of one building. And that's what was, if you go read Matthew 24 in the authorized Bible, it specifically says the buildings of the temple, not just the temple building itself, but the whole complex. And they destroyed everything except the Wailing Wall, which is the remnant of a foundation left there. He says... Um, Oh, where is that? Uh, the children of Edom in the day of Jerusalem who said, raise it, raise it, even to the foundation thereof. Uh, Edom is a type. Esau is a type of those who reject the gospel. Edom, of course, Esau meaning red, red like crimson, like sin, like the Red Sea, like dirt. The earth people, not the heavenly people, the earth people. They are going to destroy or try to destroy the very foundation. Uh, of the word of God. Isaiah 44, 28, that saith of Cyrus, he is my shepherd and shall perform all my pleasure, even saying to Jerusalem, thou shalt be built and to the temple, thy foundation shall be laid. This is a prophecy concerning Israel. Israel is going to have a house to worship in during the thousand years. The foundation of that house is being laid right now in you and I. I love the Bible. And I've had, I've had people make fun of me for this. But when I read the scriptures, I'm convinced there is going to be a, a temple during the thousand years. The likes of which have never been seen on this planet, ever. And I've, I've talked about this before. I'm just going to ask you to question, study the scripture. What do you think this new temple is going to be built out of. Think about it. Oh, maybe I'll do that one day. I'll, I'll go over that again. I love that teaching. Mm -mm -mm. Isaiah 58, 12, And they that shall be of thee shall build the old waste places. Thou shalt raise up the foundations of many generations. And thou shalt be called the repairer of the breach, the restorer of paths to dwell in. Did you know that in Ezra and Nehemiah, those two books together describe for you what's going to happen in the last days? Because one talks about rebuilding the foundation of the temple, and the other talks about repairing the breaches that are in the walls. And here, right here, we have a verse talking about it's going, there's going to be one who's going to come, and he's going to build the old waste places. He's going to repair the breach, and he's going to raise up the foundation. Mm, boy, I love that. Israel, you have got a wonderful day coming for you. Praise the Lord. Now, Ezekiel 13, very interesting passage. Ezekiel 13 deals with false preachers, false prophets, false teachers, the whole lot of them. And Paul said, you know, I'm building the foundation. You take heed on how you build that house. Because here's what happens. Some people come along and they, they lay a foundation that is different than the one that the apostles and the prophets laid in the scriptures. It's different. And so they come along and, they, and they, it's, it's all built on lies is what it is and hyped, hyped stuff from God. Oh, oh we got, we've got gold dust falling from the skies and angel feathers. Woo! That's a bunch of hooey is what that is. I'd like to go there and find the guy that's dropping all that stuff from the rafters. Makes me angry. Ezekiel 13, verse 14. So will I break down the wall that you have daubed with untempered mortar. They built it and it won't stand. And bring it down to the ground so that the foundation thereof shall be discovered. And it shall fall. And ye shall be consumed in the midst thereof, and ye shall know that I am the Lord. You remember down in Florida? Was it down in Florida? 
that guy was in his house in his bed and a sinkhole opened up underneath his house and swallowed him up and they haven't recovered the body yet not going to they said he's gone they can't recover the body and i'm just i'm thinking to myself what did this guy do wow what do you have to do to make God so mad that he does what he did with the Israelites in the wilderness? The ground opened her mouth and swallowed this guy up. Well, let me tell you what's going to happen with you. You're out there and you're trying to pretend that you're saved. You're trying to pretend that you're a Christian like everybody else. And uh, you have all these ideas and things like that. What if, what if you're wrong? about some of your conspiracy theories. What if the foundation of your conspiracy theory is flawed and faulty and has, has no substance whatsoever? What if your conspiracy theory is not built and based upon the inerrant Word of God? You know what's going to happen? You're going to be proven to be a fraud because God is going to destroy the little conspiracy house that you built and He is going to show everybody the foundation of that house and what it was made of and what it was built on. He said, you know what God is in the business of to people who will not repent? He's in the exposing business. God exposes bad people. God exposes the foundations of bad doctrine. When I first started looking into the Hebrew Roots Movement, I'm just going, it's bad, but I don't know where it comes from. Then when I caught, started catching these guys with their, with their Kabbalah mysticism doctrines coming out of their mouth, I went, that's it right there. God, is, God has let me see by tearing down the walls and all that stuff that they're building up, God has allowed me to see the foundation of, of Staley and Rudes and Monte Judah and Mark Biltz and all these other people. He's allowed me to see what is the real foundation of their doctrine, of their church, and it's Jewish witchcraft. It's exactly what Paul said it was in Galatians 3, who hath bewitched you. It's Jewish witchcraft. And I believe that God, I believe that if you build up in your mind and try to sell to other people false ideas and false doctrines and things like that, what God will do is he, he will expose everything about you and everything about your doctrine, and he will show everybody the foundation, where you got it from. And if you didn't get it from the Word of God, it ain't going to stand. Boy, that's, and you know what? The Mike Hoggards of the world take heed to that. I have just as much obligation as what I say to everybody else. I have an obligation to make sure that my doctrine, my, my, the things that run around in my head all day long, and I get, I get thoughts all the time, what if this, or what if that, man, or like, what if like, it's going to be like this? I get thoughts like that all the time. And the, th the rule is, if I can't find them in the Bible, they don't exist. I remember when um, Ron Wyatt went around telling everybody that the Ark of the Covenant was under the, the, um, the Mount Golgotha in Jerusalem, and that the blood of Jesus sprinkled on top of the mercy seat of the Ark of the Covenant, thus fulfilling the law and so on, blah, blah, blah. And I'm going, oh, that is so cool. Oh, that's amazing. Oh, wow. And I had enough fortitude in my mind to say, God, if that's real, oh, I think it is, God. I think it's real. God, would you show it to me in the Scripture? And I've spent years looking for it. It ain't there. I don't see it there anywhere. If it's not in the Bible, it doesn't exist. Your foundation is sand. That's what it is. And I have the, I'm, I'm under that same guideline. Zechariah 4.9, the hands of Zerubbabel have laid the foundation of this house. His hands shall also finish it. Oh, I love it. God built it. God laid the foundation. God, who's, we look to that city whose builder and maker is not the church, not the pope, not the apostles. God. The apostles and prophets are the foundation of the house. Who called the, who called the prophets? God did. Who called the apostles? God did. Oh, then Luke chapter 6, you know this story. The wise man built his house upon the rock, and the rains came tumbling down. Luke 6, 48, he is like a man which built a house and dig deep and laid the foundation on a rock. And when the, listen, oh, let's listen to the languages. When the flood rose, 
when the age of Aquarius